AMS 2140, Plotting and Reviewing Data in Route Mode. In this tutorial, we will look at plot data and review data functionality inside route mode of the AMS 2140. As we review these options, you'll note a visual reference to the CSI 2140. Please be aware that this product has been rebranded as AMS. From the home screen, select F8 Route to start route mode. Notice that F5 plot data is grayed out. This is because we have not yet collected the measurement point. Let's measure data using two different configurations. This is a grouped point, so two points will be measured simultaneously. Keep in mind that the AMS 2140 can record up to four channels of data simultaneously. When data is reviewed, there will be one difference when looking at a grouped measurement point and an ungrouped point. So first, Let's start by collecting data for both kinds of points so we have examples of each. I will start the motor. We'll measure the data from the grouped point, then the data from the ungrouped point. Now we can review the data. If we select F5 plot data from the grouped point, we see the spectra and waveforms for two points in a kind of quad plot. Here is the difference we spoke of earlier. You can select F6 switch plot type and do a couple of things. First, you can select a stacked plot, which looks like this. The second thing you can do is hit F6 again and disable plots that you do not wish to review. For example, I will select set plot 4 and turn it off. I will do the same for plots 3 and 2. Now we have only the spectrum of the motor outboard vertical. If you would prefer to see the waveform of this data and in full screen, use F6 again, select Plot 1, and then Waveform. Now let's go back and look at the options related to a non-grouped or single measurement point. Right away, I can see both the spectrum and waveform. I can go to F5 plot data and then F6 as before, but now instead of a screen of options, I can toggle between the spectrum, waveform, and the dual plot. As we proceed with the tutorial, be aware that we will look at both Alt 1 and Alt 2 pages for more details. Let's start with Alt 1 and select F1 fault frequency list. Here you see the fault frequencies as they are configured in the software. If I want to look at the outer race frequency of the outboard bearing, I can use the arrows here on the right to toggle down to the outboard bearing. Now I can see the fault frequencies, cage elements, outer race, and inner race. Using the ID arrows, I can toggle to the inner race. If I use F5 Select, outer race fault frequencies are displayed on the screen. Using F2 or F8, you can toggle over all the fault frequencies in a cycle. You can select F4 to see the spectrum at full size on the screen. Press F4 again to bring buttons back to the screen. F10, 11, and 12 are all functions that help drill into important data on the spectrum. F11 expands or zooms in on data, while F12 compresses or zooms out of data. If you do not have a cursor installed and press F11, you will zoom in on data in the spectrum starting in the lower left corner. If you have a cursor installed somewhere, which you now see in the lower left corner, F11 will zoom in on the data around the cursor position. F12 will zoom back out. Now let's talk about F10 the cursor mark. First we start by placing a cursor on top of a peak. Now when you expand or zoom in on the data, you are doing so in a certain moment in time. With multiple expansions, you will see the resolution lines. If you see the digital resolution lines, you can imagine that the peak is not actually here under the cursor. If this scenario were analog, 
the real peak would be here. The F10 cursor mark will use best fit curves to recalculate the analog peak using the digital information from the resolution lines. Note that when I click F10, the frequency and amplitude are recalculated to better fit the analog scenario. Now if you select F7 print plot, you will send this plot including labels, fault lines, and everything else on a plot as a JPEG or bitmap file to your computer. Let's move to the next page, Alt 2. F1 set RPM is used to reposition speed at the cursor location. F7 list peak identifies the 24 highest peaks in the spectrum as a peak list. F2 cursor type. There are several cursor types you can toggle between. The first one is the normal cursor that we have been using. Push twice to activate the harmonic cursor and three times for moving harmonic cursors that are controlled by the arrow keys. Press F2 four times for sideband cursors shown here, and press F2 five times for harmonic families. You'll notice that your F8 key has now become your next family key. The analyzer will calculate for you where the harmonic and sideband families are in the spectrum. Pushing the next family key will take you through each family but in our example, we have only one family. If you press F2 six times, you will have different families. These are sideband families. Next, family will toggle between sideband families in the spectrum. Cursor home or cursor end will reposition your cursor. First, we will go back to a normal cursor. F3 will bring your cursor back to zero. F8 will move it to the end of the plot. Clear cursor or F4 will remove the cursor from the plot. Using the x-axis unit's F5 key, you can toggle between viewing the horizontal shaft in hertz, CPM, or orders. Or you can use the F6 set axis scales to manually change the settings. Let's go back to the quad plots for a moment. Notice the red box around the lower left plot. The cursor, fault line, and many of the other functionality we have reviewed will only work the plot that is inside this red box. To move the box to another plot, you can use the touch screen or F5 change active plot. This concludes our tutorial. Please continue watching to select from other recommended tutorials or visit the AMS Reliability Channel for the AMS 2140 playlist. Additional product information can be found at emerson.com/ams2140. Thank you for watching.